Hi friends, welcome you all to another edition of Quick Tip videos brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. In this weekly edition, continuing with our exploration of the various new features which ADF offers, this week we are going to introduce before you another new transformation which was released in the latest update of Azure Data Factory. This new transformation is known as the external call transformation. It can be called from within your data flow task and it lets you call a REST API from your data flow so as to execute an external bit of logic or maybe call one of those standard REST API endpoints so as to provide you with some details. And it can be done from a row by row level which means that for every row in your data set which comes through your input stream you can invoke a REST endpoint by passing some values from your existing data set as arguments and corresponding to the argument you can perform some custom activity which is written inside the REST API endpoint and you can get the response which can be returned along with your data stream and saved into your database you use for further manipulation. So let's see how this external call transform can be used in a typical data flow task. We are going to take the example of a real world scenario where you have some order details coming from some field orders and you have the orders being captured in different currencies. So quite often you might have shops opened targeting multiple countries and the people who are buying from the shops has the ability to do the transaction in multiple currencies. In such cases you will capture the transaction currency and also the base currency of your shop. Suppose if the shop is targeted at US customers, it, the base currency will be US dollars, but you can still do your transactions using GBP or Euro or any other currencies. So let's see a situation where we are capturing such multi-currency order related data and we are going to make use of a popularly known REST API for applying the currency conversion and get the corresponding order amount in the base currency. So let's see how external call transform can come handy in such a Scenario. For the sake of this illustration, we are going to consider this sample data set which consists of orders which are represented in multiple currencies. So you can see there are uh, for each order there is a transaction currency and a base currency. This represents the currency in which the order transaction was performed and also the base currency represents the store through which the order came in. So USD means it's a US store, uh, CAD means Canada. EUR means it's Europe store like that. So we have different online stores and depending on what store the customer chose to purchase from that represents the base currency whereas the transaction currency represents the actual currency in which the payment was made. So the main purpose of this illustration is to make sure that we are going to convert the value of transaction into the base currency value. So that means 1833.92 in the first order is in AD. Now we want to get it converted to USD and we'll be making use of a popularly known REST endpoint called XE.com for performing the currency conversion as and when we process these order details. So let's see how we can make use of this external call transform and call the API from within it so as to convert the amount which is in a one transaction currency to another currency which will match the base currency of our store. So let's start off by first loading this document onto a Azure blob storage. So we have an Azure blob storage set up for the purpose. To start off the illustration we have set up an Azure blob storage account where we have uploaded the file with the multi-currency order details inside. So we do have a account called my default storage for uh, files and inside that I have created a folder called uh, current data container in which I have uploaded the multi-currency order file. Now we need to go ahead and create a package. So let's go back to the Azure Data Factory Studio which is the default development tool for creating the pipelines. So let's go and uh, go to the other tab. We are going to create a new pipeline. So let's go to the pipeline and then let's add a new pipeline and the first step would be to add a data flow tasks. So this external URL is a transformation which is available inside data flow task. So let's add a new data flow task. So now that we have added the data flow task, let's add a new data flow. So click on new, it will automatically create a new data flow and then we can now start adding our various tasks inside. 
the first task for us would be to add a source and this source is going to point to the blob storage file so let's select azure blob storage let's select csv because our file model is csv and let's create a linked service so we are going to point to the azure subscription and to my storage account and let's test the connection and by default it will be able to connect before all are within the same tenant so click on create using the account key it will connect automatically and now we need to go inside and browse to the file so my file is inside current c data container and i'll just select the multi currency order and make sure you mark the first row as header so that it can take the schema information from the file itself and then click on ok so now if you go to the inspect you can see that all the columns inside your file are automatically added to the schema so you have the base currency the transaction currency the order total advisor information all the information coming inside now we need to call the url for each of these rows within this file so we have the transaction currency we have the base currency and we have to apply the conversion by calling the api and we are going to use xc.com api so if you go to xc.com you can see that there are multiple endpoints inside and the endpoint that we'll be using for this illustration will be this endpoint which is basically a conversion endpoint which converts from one currency to another currency so it accepts three arguments first one is the from currency second one is the to currency and third one is the amount so if you see when i pass canada dollar and us dollar and the amount as 110.23 it will convert this 110.23 from canada dollars to us dollars and it will give the result as 86 so now keeping this in mind we are going to use this particular endpoint so let's come back to our package and we are going to add the new transform this new transform is called external call transform and it is available from within the schema modifier group so you can select external call and it will automatically ask you for the type of the data set as of now only rust is supported so you can select rust itself and you want to create a linked service now so the linked service will point to the base url so we need to again go back to the calling url and this is your base url the url till the question mark this is your base url so you can copy that and paste it here the base url and the username and the password when you are signing up for the trial account or any kind of account within xc you will be getting a api key and also an api id and that is the same thing that you need to use here i have already entered it so it is saved in my browser so you can get it by going inside your account page within xc.com once you sign up for an account so once i add this information and try to test connection you can see that the connection will be successful using the key and the username it will be able to authenticate me as a valid user within this exit.com so click on create so now you have created the linked service to your rest endpoint now we need to pass the relative url so there is something known as row relative url this is where you can pass it and because the url has to come from your data source if you see the url format you can see that there is a from and you need to pass the value to you need to pass the value and the amount and all these values will come from your columns so you have your columns which are coming from your files the transparency the base current and the order total these three has to be passed for this so for that purpose you need to create a string which consists of all these values for that purpose you can add a derived column transformation so derived column transformation lets you add dynamic columns based on your input stream so i'm going to add a column called currency request and here you need to add the expression so the expression will look like this so if you see this expression so it consists of the string from then it will followed by the transaction currency column which is there in your input stream to and base currency and amount will come from the order total so all these values will be taken from your columns and it will form this string so that it becomes this part of your url so you have already given the base url and you have now given the query string url so once you add both of this then your request will be complete so save this and this is called currency request and now if you go to the external call this column can be mapped to your row relative url so if you see inside you can see the currency request so pass that currency request and if you want to include additional details inside your response you can add that otherwise you can leave it as it is now if you go to the mapping you can see that the current request column is mapped inside this is the column from which you can assume the part of the url so now that you have done the various steps and your, your external call is also ready now what we can do is like if you want we can check the results so for that we are going to turn on the debug and then once the debug cluster is up we can see how the request will be sent to the rest endpoint and how the response will be obtained once you see that the response is correct then you can then use the response 
to return the data that you want. Before we test out this REST API call, we need to also define the response body definition. So the response body definition will include the format or the schema in which the data will be returned by the request. So if you want to check that, you can go to the previous screen where you used that REST API endpoint and you can see that this is the format in which the response is provided. So based on this the format in which you are getting the response you can create a response schema so what you can do is like instead of uh, passing it as the json itself you can convert it into a string in this format so if you see this consists of the full data entities that you are getting as the response in the same format so you are getting first the term as one of the nodes which is of type string then you have the privacy then you have the from the amount the timestamp and then there is a complex type 2 inside that you have code currency and mid so based on that you create a response format like this you can copy it and paste it to the response body so as to clearly define what is the format in which you can expect the response to come so once you save and finish it now the response is also defined. So once you have done this, now you can go to the data preview and if you are doing it for the first time, you need to make sure that the data flow debug is turned to on. So in my case, I have already turned it on. It will take a couple of minutes before the clusters are ready. So once the clusters are ready, you can just click on refresh. Now it will provide you with the details of the input stream data that is coming along with the response. That will also contain the column which is provided as the response by this API call. As you see, now you can see the execution result for each of those api calls so if you see this consists of the data from your input stream and then also if you see these are the data which is returned by the api call it provides the terms privacy from amount to and that two will contain the details of your currency and the value that is converted so this follows the same schema which you have defined in your output and this schema you can get it from the response of your api call from by directly going to the XE site and using that API call using the endpoint which you want to call from your package you will get the exact format of your response using that you can define the schema and put it so now that you have got the response if you see the response is inside a JSON structure so you need to now unroll the JSON structure to get the data from that what you need is actually this value 499 value but it is coming inside a JSON complex structure so you need to use flatten transformation so there is a transformation which is available known as the flatten transformation which can be used for parsing and getting the data from within your JSON so here if you see there is a property called unrolled by this is where you need to map to that particular level so you need to get the value from within the two array so you need to map it to body.tube and from your available columns you can now remove the unwanted columns so you don't require the current request you don't require the body also so you need to get it from within your two and you need to get the last value which is your mid this is the value that contains the converted value so what you can do is like you can rename it to base total so that it will give you the total value converted to the base currency and it will extract it from your json now if you go and check this data preview you should be able to see the data in your exact format you want which you can use for populating to your required destination so in this case we are going to populate it to a table which is set up inside azure sql database so now you got the final output you see this consists of all the columns which is coming from your input stream and added to that you have the converted value see this order total was 4414 in indian rupees when it converted to usd it became 59 if you want to check if this is correct see this if this is the transaction currency is also same the base currency is also same so if you see 56.81 got converted to 56.81 because it's the same so which means that your conversion is working fine so now that you have got the final data also you can now add the sync task and this sync task is going to point to azure sql database so select azure sql database and create a link service to point to your Azure SQL database and you are going to create a new table. Let's name this table as multi currency order details. So we have named it multi currency order details and let's go to the mapping and let's keep it auto mapping. So if you want to disable that, you can see that all these columns will be moved to the corresponding columns in your table. So you can again, if you want, you can check the data preview one time and then finally you can save this pipeline, publish this pipeline, and finally execute it and then you, if you go back and check your table you'll be able to see the converted data populated into your azure sql database so the data is now there you can see the preview data and you can find that it's coming correctly now all you need to do is like just publish this you can probably name this pipeline as 
something else so you can just uh, rename it to multi currency order pipeline and then you can publish so the data flow the pipeline and all the corresponding tasks will get to return to the adf repository wait for the notification and once it's published you will get a notification like this now you can go to your pipeline and go to the add trigger and you can click on trigger now and click on ok it will take around five minutes for the package to execute wait for the package execution to be completed and then let's go to the azure sql database go to the query editor and check the tape so go to the monitor tab and keep refreshing your package until it is success so keep on refreshing and finally you'll see that your package is success which means that the execution is now completed now that the pipeline is success you can go back to your azure data sql database so this is your azure sql database you can go to the overview page and from there you can go to the query editor and inside the query editor you can log in using your username and the password and then you'll see the new table that we created so we created the table called multi-currency order detail so if you go there and select the top thousand rows you should be able to see all the data now that you have populated so this is the data that you have populated if you see it contains both the order total which comes from your file and also the base total which is obtained by calling the api from each of these rows by passing this order total the transaction currency and the base currency based on this conversion it did the conversion and changed 1833 dirhams to 499 dollars Similarly, for each currency, like 1 to 97.42 Indian rupees to $70, which means that your API call was successful every row. So, you made use of the new transformation available known as the external call transformation for calling this rest endpoint from each of these rows within your data flow and got the response, which you saved as a result along with your input string inside your table. As seen from this quick illustration, you can make use of the new available external call transformation inside your data flow so as to call an api for performing any kind of custom processing on each of the rows coming from your input stream and then you can capture the corresponding response and add it to your input stream to save it into some kind of a sync system as usual keep sending your feedback and let me know how you find these useful videos feel free to let me know your comments on the same and feel free to follow my channel for getting useful tips like this every week and make sure you press on the bell icon for getting notifications meet you all soon with another useful quick tip like this next week till then bye and thanks for your time